Pritrasura. Once, when Indra was in the full glory of honor and respect among the gods, Brihaspati, the celestial guru, came to his court while the court was in full session. Indra, because he was the king and the head per, uh, personage in the court, did not get up and receive him or salute him, nor did he order for a proper seat to be given to Brihaspati. Brihaspati observed the pride of Indra and calmly returned home. When he was gone, Indra realized that he had unwittingly disgraced his own revered guru and so feared that some trouble was in store for him. To avoid it, he went to meet the guru at his residence. Brihaspati knew this and by his yogic power made himself invisible. Indra could not meet him or make amends for his misdeed. Meanwhile, the Rakshasas heard that the gods had lost their guru and so decided that it was the best time for them to attack the gods. With the guidance of their guru, Shukracharya, they attacked the gods with all kinds of arms, riding on all kinds of vehicles. The devas ran pell-mell with none to protect them or give proper guidance. Finally, they reached the abode of Brahma. Brahma chastised them for their folly in dishonoring their own guru. Though possessed of great strength, wealth and intelligence, they misused them and never cared to obtain the blessings of a teacher. Having disgraced their own teacher, they had to reap the consequences in the shape of trouble from the enemies. This could not be avoided as action and reaction are equal and opposite. The only way out was to get a teacher. Vishwarupa, son of Tvashta, will be capable of being your guru and will relieve your distress, told Brahma to them. Accordingly, the gods approached Vishwarupa, saluted to him and begged for protection against the demons. Vishwarupa smiled at their fate and agreed to help them. He taught them the secret knowledge of Lord Narayana, had the demons defeated by them and re-established Indra on his own throne. Indra learned from Vishwarupa the great mantra called Narayana Kavacha which was capable of giving great results. It was the description of the manifestations of the Maya or the power of the Lord. Indra learnt it in detail and meditated on it and was able to vanquish all his enemies and regain his lost glory. Vishwarupa, the acting preceptor of the Devas, had three heads and three mouths with which he would drink nectar with the gods, would drink wine with the demons and would eat food with the human beings. So he used to pass on the sacrificial offerings of the gods stealthily to the demons. He was partial to the demons because his mother belonged to the demons family. Indra came to know of this treachery and instantly cut his heads off. The three heads became three birds and began to perch on Indra. Indra suffered the consequences of this Brahmahatya for one year and then distributed it to the earth, water, trees and women. They received it and are bearing the same by the earth when dug out, closing by itself. Water when with bubbles or foam clearing itself. The trees when cut oozing out gum and sprouting again. And women in giving out menstrual discharge. Meanwhile, Tvashta, father of Vishwarupa, grew angry at Indra for killing his son Vishwarupa. He performed a sacrifice and brought out a demon called Brutrasura, Chitraketu, who began to eat and swallow all the gods. The gods, including Indra, were greatly afraid. They beseeched Lord Purushottama, residing in their own hearts, for protection. The Lord was much pleased with their praise, but since they wanted only material gains, he asked them to beg of sage Dadichi for his body, which was very strong, being saturated with the Narayana Kavacha Mantra. He would gladly give it. Out of its bones, Vishwakarma, the celestial engineer, 
would create a weapon for indra with which vritra could be killed and the gods attain peace accordingly the gods including indra approached sage dadichi and begged for his body the sage asked them the body is the dearest to all living creatures on earth will anyone give away in charity a thing which is dear and painful to part with even at death has anybody shown an example like this who will have the courage to give it even if the almighty should come and ask for the gods reply for a magnanimous soul there is nothing which is painful to give because of their compassion for living beings they will give anything without hesitation but it, it is only the selfish people who will not feel the difficulty of others a gracious donor will never say no to a request the sage replied it is quite so this body must leave me if not today some other day it is dharma to relieve the sufferings of fellow creatures otherwise life will be a waste so saying the sage established himself in the supreme and left off the body vishwakarma the celestial artisan prepared out of the bones a weapon called vajram or thunderbolt and gave it to indra indra received it and proceeded with all his army to attack vritra and his forces the forces of vritra ran away vritra alone remained back and fought with indra he called indra for battle if he had even then left off his desires for sense enjoyments that is advising him to aspire for higher joys vritra attacked indra with a trident indra cut off vritra's arm bearing the trident vritra with the other arm attacked indra with the club with it indra's thunderbolt fell down and his elephant reeled back vritra observed this and asked indra to pick up his weapon and then come back to fight victory and defeat are the dispensations of the lord supreme we are not responsible for them we act according to his intentions like puppet toys in a show play without his will the jeeva prakriti or mahatatva the ego the five elements the indriyas and the mind can do nothing creation sustenance and dissolution function according to his orders birth and death victory and defeat we suffer as his will through true knowledge we can remain balanced in all joys and sorrows the jeeva is really the witness prakriti is the actress though my body may die in this battle all this play must proceed on in his presence as per his will indra appreciated his mental stability and congratulated him for his devotion to the lord they both attacked each other indra cut off his other arm also vritra opened his mouth wide and swallowed indra with his elephant indra opened vritra's belly with his thunderbolt and came out and then cut off the neck of the demon vritrasura calling out the name of the lord narayana left his body and merged with the supreme though indra had the victory he was unhappy because he had killed another brahmin vritra and that sin would torment him so he went to the lake manasa sarovara in entered a lotus flower and remained in its stalk under water for 1000 years doing tapas the sin brahmahatya could not reach him and it got neutralized by his tapas he again came back performed another horse sacrifice and regained his throne in heaven in his absence while he was performing tapas king nahusha who had performed 100 horse sacrifices acted as indra but soon he got displaced from that exalted seat due to his evil tendencies and was born as a serpent parikshit asked shuka how did the demon vritra a great monster entertain such a devotion to lord narayana that he was able to remember him even in the battlefield and even when death was actually facing him that amount of stability of mind is not seen even in saints sages or gods 
Shuka replied, You have heard the story of Chitraketu. Vritra was no other than the great devotee Chitraketu, born as a demon on account of the curse of the goddess Parvati. Chitraketu became a Brahmanyani on account of the association of sages Angira and Narada. And so, though the bodies changed, his knowledge of the self did not give way. He was conscious of the self even while dying on the battlefield fighting with Indra.